here at 152, or excuse me, uh, 170 pounds, Cookie Barraza going against Blake Miller. And Cookie's up 6-4 to four, as we've got 35 seconds left here in the second period. Not sure where, oh, nice shot. Cookie uh, takes uh, Blake Miller right down, hits him with a cross face. Has that little scissor circle on the right leg, working from the right side. It's a little cross face there. Up there at the clock. And just trying to throw a grapevine in there. Get a stalling warning on uh, Blake Miller from Eaton. Eaton Reds in a black single tonight. And we're down to two seconds left. Going to give one point to uh, Miller. I'm not sure what that was for. Yeah, they have blood a break time. in the action. A little blood time or something. State Farm Insurance. Let the State Farm Insurance Office of Greg Mullen in Brush help you find the best policy to fit your life. Home, auto, life, health, State Farm Insurance is here for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call at 842-4555. B&B Appliance. When you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan. B&B Appliance carries a full and complete line of Whirlpool appliances and will help you find your perfect fit. B&B Appliance in downtown Fort Morgan. Okay, we're ready to go. I think we're going to stop the blood time. I think the blood time is going for Blake Miller. And the score's 8-6. to six. Quick stand up. Miller's going to get the escape for the half a second on the clock. That's going to make it 8-7 to seven for Cookie Barraza. And Miller's going to take down position. Down by one. And we're underway. Cookie grabs an ankle. Turns it forward. Miller tries to set out. Cookie settles that down. Breaks him flat. Up here towards the near edge. And Miller trying to set out. Cookie follows him around. And a side drag Miller. He looks smaller than Miller by quite a bit. And Miller goes set out and tie it up with the escape. Go back to the center. And they're going to go forehead to forehead. Cookie fakes a shot. And they'll come right back to forehead to forehead. And there's a little throw by a tip. There's a shot double leg in there by Cookie. And they're deep with it. Nice tackle. And down goes Miller. Two-point takedown. That'll give Cookie the two-point lead. Ten to eight. A minute three left in counting. Cookie thought about turning him loose. Miller bunched up in a ball underneath. And the fish is going to give Cookie a point. On the stall warning. This second one now. Cookie's going to turn him loose. And give Miller the escape with 40 seconds of counter. She'll go forehead to forehead on the far side. She circles back towards the center circle. Miller turns it in the way. Cookie paints a shot. Miller with a shot. Oh, nice snap down. Spinning around behind his cookie. And he'll go up 13 to 9 and give the escape to uh, Miller. And they come back to the center on their feet. 13 to 10 now. 15 seconds in counting. And Cookie faints a shot. And working into a bear hug right here at the edge. Cookie backs away, drops in on a tackle. Tri heel trips him and down goes Miller again. 15 to 10, and that'll be the match. 15 to 10 for uh, Cookie Barraza for the Beat Diggers. And it'll be two wins in a row for the Diggers. Next up will be Toby McDonald going against Colton. Ingram at 182. Okay, welcome back. Thanks to Valley View Villa. And uh, still having trouble with our internet connection. And we're going to get a uh, takedown for Colton Ingram. 
And he gets called for locked hands. It'll be a penalty point going Toby McDonald's way. Team side has the beat diggers up nine to six over uh, Eaton Reds. Beat diggers gave up a pin to Rusty Lord, 152 pounds. Came back with a win by Alec Peterson by a fall over uh, Jace Cassidy and Cookie Barraza with a 15 to 10 win over. Uh, Blake Miller, and that's where we're at now. It's 9-6 to six for the Beat Diggers. Toby McDonald down by one. 118 left first period. A little trouble with our internet connection tonight. I apologize for that. Okay, Toby's looking away from us. He's set. He'll get busted forward by uh, Colton Ingram. Not all the beat diggers quite on weight. Ingram gets a hammer lock back on Toby. And trying to do something with it. Toby trying to build a base. Oh, there comes a half Nelson off that. Toby's in trouble. Ingram looks a little bigger than Toby, and he's going for the pin. And there it is. Beat diggers will give up the pin. And uh, we'll take 30 seconds and be back with more on 10-10 KSIR. It's still on. At 195, from Rush, Kyle Rosenbaum, from me, Garrett Olson. Kayla, did you get that? Okay, welcome back to Eaton at 195 pounds. Kyle Rosenbrock, not quite down to the 182 yet. He's in on a single leg on uh, Garrett Colson, lifting it up, trips Colson down, and he's got the takedown right here at the near edge. Nice job by Kyle Rosenbrock. Kyle ranked uh, number three at uh, 182 pounds. Garrett Colson number six at uh, 195. Rosenbrock in on the right side as we reset. Quick stand up by uh, Colson. Rosenbrock uh, loses the wrist and we're going to one point escape to Garrett Colson. Circle. Uh, the mat lights here. It's kind of dark up here in the stands. Wrestlers in the spotlight. So work for wrist control. 50 seconds left. Oh, nice little arm drag by Rosenbrock. Picks up a single leg, but he's going to give up on it. He's right in front of the Eaton bench. Couldn't, didn't have enough room to complete it. So work back towards the 10-foot circle. Two-handed snap down attempt by uh, Colson. He gets Rosenbrock down. Rosenbrock these knees and up with the tackle, and they go out of bounds. So after restart, 27 seconds, first period. Two to one for Rosenbrock. Giving up a little weight out there. Is there a little wrist ties, a little arm drag attempt by Garrett Colson. Come back to the center. Still circling and head tapping. There's a little pick attempt by Rosenbrock. And get away from that. Give a couple head taps. Then we'll head to the second period. Rosenbrock by one. Be Eaton's choice. He'll defer. And Rosenbrock will take the down position. And we're underway. Colson trying to fight off a reversal. Rosenbrock lifts him up, dumps him down, throws him right to his back, chest to chest, going for the pin. The facials finally gets over there, and there's the pin. 113 or 213 pin for Kyle Rosenbrock. And that'll put the beat diggers back in the lead. Morgan Federal Bank, a bank that is committed to their community and keeping banking simple. When you need banking advice, stop by and see one of their loan officers Monday through Friday, 321 Enzyme. Morgan Federal Bank, there is a difference. 
Okay, Jose Rodriguez set to step out here at 220 pounds against uh, James Morano. J-A-Y-M-Z. I think that's James. And they shake hands. And Morano kind of giving a lot of head snaps. And Jose's just a double leg tackle dumps him down, but they're out of bounds. So I have to restart. Going to bowl it into Jose. Jose drops down, has his tackle set up again, lifts it out, sets him over. But Morano out in front now. He's got a little lateral drop, and Morano uh, out of bounds. And they'll, Jose will touch the line, and they'll come back to the center. Jose faints a shot. And they come ear to ear. Jose in on a double leg tackle. He's got a kind of out to the side at the moment. I thought he had a single leg hooked up, but uh, he's just caught on his knees. Morano trying a little cow catcher on him. Got a front headlock, a little drag out by Jose. You know, come up in wizard position. Jose kind of step over the leg and gets thrown right to his back. Jose rolls through it and breaks out. Now shoot in. And he's trying to hook up a single leg, but Morano blocks that. 50 seconds and counting here in the first period. They work towards the far edge, getting that tie up with uh, Morano working over the shoulders. Now Morano with a headlock dumps Jose right to his back. 36 seconds left. Jose right on the edge. And Morano going for the pin. And uh, Jose saying he can't breathe. And they're going to give a four-point near fall to Murano. Two-point takedown, four-point near fall. Okay, he kind of tapped out on that, said he couldn't breathe. And he's going to go right back to the center and uh, restart him. And Jose spins out of that under position. Trying to work up, giving up a few pounds here, but he does that in practice all the time. But now Jose trying to drag out of there, now go the other way. And Morano trying to sprawl away from him. Just we're down to seven seconds left. And Jose stands up, breaks away, gets the one point, and will head to the second period. Jose was in deep trouble. So he got out of that mess, gave up the four-point near fall. Was able to take the down position to start the second period. Working from behind. Down six to one. Morano in on the left side. And working that tight waist. Breaks Jose down for a moment, trying to work a hammer lock back on him. Down the way out in front there. Going to crank that hammer lock back. And we'll get a stalling warning on uh, Jose as he's caught underneath. But, uh, we're going to keep that left arm, near arm tied up. A loose tight waist on there. As they trying to build a base, and they're going to have a stalling warning on Toronto now. So we'll just restart him. Each wrestler with a stall. Jose looking away from us. Morano in on the left side. And Jose a hard switch right off the whistle. And he gets caught. And he's on his hip and gets drunk, dumped right over on his back. And he's in trouble again. 115 on the clock. And there's a pin. Jose Rodriguez. This is a huge win for uh, Eaton Reds. And Jose Rodriguez ranked number two in the state at 195. Gets pinned by James Morano. Oh man, Eaton is going to jump back in the lead, 18 to 15 over the Beat Diggers. Central Auto Parts, you need your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape. So make sure you take care of them by purchasing the best quality parts at great prices at your local Napa store. 
Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. Okay, Joe Carlin set to go here at 285, ranked number one in the state, going against Lucas Hafferty. Lucas uh, a long ways from 285 pounds. Joe's probably going about 250, and he's in on a single leg. Drags out of that, picks up the takedown. And uh, Hafferty's working around with a, got a reversal on uh, Carlin. As he kind of did a switch, walked it around. Now Carlin trying to stand up out of this. Hafferty with a, kind of a bear hook from behind. And Carlin just stands up, gets the escape. Kind of give him the one point lead. Three to two. 119 left counting here in the first period. A heavyweight match. Going ear to ear. We'll work back into the 10 foot circle and break apart. Rubbing foreheads. Carlin wrestled at 220 last year. And he's in on a double leg tackle. That switches off the single for a moment. Big old sprawl by uh, Hafferty. And he's got Carlin kind of caught underneath. Carlin stands up. And just lets Hafferty drop. And they work back to the 10 foot circle and tie up forehead to forehead. There you go. Carlin kind of pushing into him. 30 seconds left here, first period. And a break apart. Back to that forehead to forehead tie up. Red's always well coached. That's Roy True, head coach. There's a single leg shot by Carlin. Lifts it up. Dumps him right to his back. And he's picking up back points. Doesn't, doesn't have a real good pin hold here. Just got steps through the leg, and he'll pick up a five point move right there at the end of the uh, first period. Two point takedown, three point near fall. And Carlin's up eight to two, and it'll be Eaton's choice. And Haggerty's going to take, Hafferty, excuse me, is going to take the down position. Don't have any ages on the uh, Eaton wrestlers, but Joe Carwin, a senior for the Beat Diggers, he's going to get a caution on the start. There you go. Kind of setting the bunch there behind him now. Get a little looser start. Rafferty trying to set out. So settles that down. Tries to put a hammer lock back on Hafferty. Hafferty trying to spin away from it. They go into 360. Carlin gives up on that. Comes back. Gets the cross face in there. Posts the arm. Has reaching for that pick and step off that cross face. And over goes Hafferty. He's got the barbar with one arm going for the pin. And there it is. Joe Carlin with a pin win. And that'll come at 231 of the match. So we'll go to the 106 pounds uh, after the short timeout on 10 10 KSIR. Welcome back. We're at 106 pounds now. Caleb Cox going against Hayden Gavette. And we're underway. And I don't think either one of them weigh 106 pounds, but we're underway. Cox giving up a little length as they go ear to ear. A little snap down. Cox catches a front headlock. Has got a little underhook and will break apart. Back to the tie up. Both of them reaching for a leg. Cox with a little cow catcher. Now they'll shoot down on a single, but they run out of man. Well, I've said send back to the center. Peter is back in the lead on the team side, 21 to 18. As we go to the 106 pounders, Cox fainted his shot. That didn't work. They come back to their feet. Cox staying at a 10 foot circle, letting Gavette uh, shoot. And uh, Gavette shoots in, gets a takedown, even though he got a uh, stalling warning as he's been backing up. Now Cox caught underneath. Gavette with the lead, two to nothing. Cox trying to get some wrist control. Uh, stands up and peels away and gets the escape. Gavette with a shot. 
Walks right around behind him and uh, going to get the two point takedown. The call should go up three to two. Okay, Aiden Devet sets on the bottom. Cox in on the left side. We're going to caution on the start. I didn't think he waited till the referee told him he's ready to go. So the referee says, now you can get, get set and go. Both of them did a little twitch, but the referee just waited a moment. Now he blows the whistle and we're underway. Cox ties up that left arm. Two on one. It's got a crank clear underneath the stomach of Gavette. As he busts him forward towards the far side of the mat. That's really clamping that two on one, trying to uh, turn to that. Now he sets the arm bar with that uh, here on the left side. They're chicken wing trying to walk it around. It's reinforced underneath. Uh, Cox tries to pull him into him. Now he's trying to work it away from him. Uh, pull Gavette into him with nine seconds in counting. And we're going to get a stalemate call with 6.5 seconds in the first period. We're set. Cox on top. He'll grab an ankle. And trying to hang on to it here as he drops down low with a single leg and maintains, barely maintains control. We're ahead in the second period. Should be Cox's choice. And he'll defer and the bat will take the down position. Cox in on the left side. Quick stand up attempt by Gavet. Cox working that two on one again. Lost that two on one. He'll come back with a little spiral right. And a half Nelson. Gavet is one way then the other. Gavet now stands up trying to peel the wrist. And Cox trying to bring him back down to that two-on-one and a trip. The vet a little longer. They're going to call Cox for stalling. And we'll get a, a point as the vet gets the escape. And we'll give Cox the stall one. So each wrestler's had a stalling warning. Back to center, giving each other the evil eye. Go forehead to forehead. Cox may, may be giving up about 10 pounds out there. There's a tried a shot, but he hooked the head. Didn't catch the leg. And come up facing each other, just kind of bobbing. And now they'll tie up forehead to forehead. About 45 seconds left here, second period. Staying that tie up. Cox reaches for a leg. So that uh, reaches for the out of bounds and he'll get out and they'll have to restart. He figures he did a good job of staying in the center and trying to keep away from that edge wrestling. Here's a shot by Gavette. Cox crawled away from that. Comes up forehead to forehead. Gavette kind of pushing him towards the Eaton bench. Pretty good little tie up there. Now they go fighting for wrist control. Little duck under a tent by Gavette. Now he tries a little shot. Cox blocks that. They'll break apart. Head tap by Gavette. Cox comes right back to the uh, tie up. Run out of time. As Cox made his shot. We're tied up 3-3. Three, three. Had a little oh, headgear. Came off, so we'll have to fix that up. And Cox's choice, he'll take the down position. Caleb, freshman for the Beat Diggers, ranked number 10 in the state by on the mat. We'll thank Tim Yount for all he does for Colorado wrestling. Okay, we're set to go. Cox working off the bottom. He gets bunched up there in a the ball and stands up. Trying to get wrist control. Turns in, gets a little whizzer on the vet. The vet lifts up the single. Cox with the wizard, comes up faces and gets the escape. 
will be on their feet. Cops up by one. 20 seconds gone, first per third period. Work to the near side. Forehead to forehead. Cops with the inside control. Tries a little shot, a little duck under faint by Hayden Gavette. Look over to the beat digger side now. So going forehead to forehead now, they'll break apart. Cox tries to snap down, reaches for an ankle. Gavette drives him out of bounds. 106 on the clock. Cox leading 4 to 3. Beat diggers lead the duel 21 18. Referee with a little conversation with the wrestlers before he blew the whistle. We'll go back to that ear to ear tie. Yvette working towards the edge. The Cox faces a shot. Yvette drops the knee. Come back up. Forehead to forehead. Yvette grabs that bicep, keeps it tied up. Still working, there's some feints, but uh, no real shots there by Gavette. Now he tries a shot. Cox tried to get around behind, drives him out of bounds. 28 seconds left here in the third period. On their feet. Gavette's playing with his head here. Getting a little lecture from the referee. Now we're set to go. Got in a 10 foot circle. Faint by Gavette. Cox is around behind him, has him by the waist, and he'll drop him down for the two point takedown. And Gavette trying to set out. Cox is going to try to keep a hold of him. There's a half Nelson trying to drive it by Cox, driving it hard, really putting the pressure onto that half Nelson. And it'll be Cox with the win. Six to three for the beat diggers. How about that? MMI International, your operation deserves the best. When buying a mixer or feeder truck, compare the MMI design, craftsmanship, and service. They continually outperform our competitors, hands down, and they aren't afraid to stand behind their product. Call them at 842-5161. Okay, we're underway at 113 pounds. Colin Cole for the Beat Diggers, freshman. Taking on Alan Rodriguez. Alan with it. A L H A N. As they go. Looks like Colin trying to push into Rodriguez. We'll work over here to the near side. A lot of hand slapping. We work back to the 10 foot circle. Rodriguez moving side to side, not forward yet. Colin backs away for a moment. Uh, a loose tie up, forehead to forehead. Colin with a shot drives Rodriguez out of bounds. Rodriguez in the black with the red. A little red trim. Colin in the beat digger BHS on the back and some gold trim on the sides. Maroon the rest of the single. Colin takes a couple shots and gets a stalling warning and Rodriguez still backing up and they'll go out of bounds. And that's going to give Colin a point. Penalty point on Rodriguez for, for uh, backing out. Good shots. Keep it good. Keep good shots. Keep the pressure. So it looks like Tony Mustari, one of the coaches for Eaton Reds, out there trying to complain to the referee. Roy True, the head coach, Tony Mustari, three-time state champ for uh, Greeley West, I think it was, and Brandon Camerzel, he had two or three for the Eaton Reds. He's another coach along with uh, Richard Lohr, who's been here forever. Of course, we always miss, miss Coach Geronimo. Oh, Colin right in on a single leg as they restart. He's got the takedown. Now he's got a head lever set in on uh, Rodriguez, but they're going to be out of bounds. Two-point lead now for Colin. Or excuse me, three after that penalty point. And we've still got 49 seconds left here in the first period. Colin working from the top, left side. We get kind of a double clutch. 
And I think that's going against uh, Deaton Red. Okay. Rodriguez tries to stand up. Colin grab an ankle. And Rodriguez gets up. Colin sets up the two on one. And then a pop out of bounds. Head back to center. Feet Diggers lead to duel 24 18. Is worth 113 pounds. We're going to caution on uh, Colin Cole. I'm not quite sure what for. The referee was waving his palms forward and backwards. Colin will come in on the left side this time. Quick stand up by Rodriguez. They come to the edge. And uh, Brandon Camerzell's out uh, referee. And the referee says, you come over to the scorer's table. I want to talk to you, young man. Uh, I think the coaches are going to be in a little trouble here as they're coming up and shouting at the referee on his calls. Ooh. One point green. Penalty point on the bench, I think is what that is. I think that's a... It's a team point. Well, they took a point away from the beat diggers. Oh. On the... You know, what was that about? They're calling out, trying to run a head lever on Rodriguez. Now he's out to the side, gets a half Nelson in. Over Rodriguez goes for a one count. They'll throw the half Nelson in there. And uh, now they're their feet and out of bounds. I'm not sure what all that was about, but... Uh, I don't know. I couldn't quite see what those hand signals from Aaron Quinlan were, but we're restarting here with 12 seconds left here in the uh, first period. It's been a long first period. Colin trying to hang on to control on Rodriguez, and they'll go out of bounds. Never heard anybody from the other team come up screaming at the referee and then get a point for a team deduction on the other team, but that's what's on the scoreboard. There's a quick stand-up attempt by Rodriguez calling with the ankle, trips him forward, and we'll head to the second period finally. Three to nothing for Colin. Should be uh, Rodriguez's choice. He's going to take the down position. Builds a base. Trying to stand up. Colin uh, has a near arm, tight waist, and now Rodriguez is going to get the escape. Gonna make it three to one. They're on their feet. Colin kind of backing away from a couple of head slaps from Rodriguez. Colin the third Cole son, the rest are four of the beat diggers. in the 10-foot circle. Hard snap down by Colin. Now he gets in deep. Nope, drops down his feet. Now he'll drop and get an ankle. He just about made a terrible shot. Recovered it by uh, hitting an ankle, and he'll just end up out of bounds. 119 on the clock, second period. Circle. A couple of head taps. Back to that forehead to forehead tie. Colin drives Rodriguez out of bounds. Okay, a restart. 50 seconds and counting here in the second period. Rodriguez just hitting Colin in the face. Colin tries to snap his head down. Rodriguez hasn't tried his shot yet, I don't think. As they tie up in the 10-foot circle, Colin. A little snap down. And working right on the edge of the 10-foot circle. Colin with a long-range shot. 
Rodriguez trying to fight it off of the headlock, and oh, nice takedown right at the edge by Colin Cole. That'll put him up five to one. With 14 and a half seconds on the clock. Second period. Colin in on the left side, then we're underway. Quick stand up by Rodriguez, two on one by Cole, and they'll go out of bounds. Thought he about lost his two on one or about lost Rodriguez, but he's able to push him out of bounds, drive him out of bounds. 9.4 seconds. We restart. Colin grabs an ankle. Rodriguez stands up, runs towards the edge, and he'll be out of bounds again. 4.6 seconds. I think the referee wanted to call one of them for something, but didn't know exactly which one was at fault there. Rodriguez for running out or calling for pushing him. Got a little blood time here. Was sure who's bleeding. It must be Colin. Uh, Coach Quinlan's looking for a, Erlich, a little towels. Ehrlich Toyota East. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Ehrlich Toyota East in Fort Morgan will fit you into a car or truck of your choice. Serving all of Northeast and Colorado, Ehrlich Toyota East. Equitable savings and loan. Well, we'll get to them. I think we're ready to go for this last 4.6 seconds of the second period. Quick stand up by Rodriguez. Turns, gets the escape. Colin drives him out of bounds. And that's a 5 to 2 as we go to the uh, third period. Colin in the lead. It's his choice. And he wants down position. Not sure he does, but Coach wants him to do that. Okay, they look away from us. Rodriguez in here on the left side. Colin quick stand up attempt. Side drag by Rodriguez. Couple of them. Colin gets to his feet, trying to kick free. Got Rodriguez out in front of him. He drops down to a single, but Rodriguez is out of bounds. But Colin will get the escape point. Go up six to two. Rodriguez thought he was down. <laughs> okay. He's circling the ten foot lines. The other line as we uh, into the third period. A lot of head slapping out there, but still waiting for a good shot by Rodriguez. Working on the head. Colin grabs some wrists. Do a little heavy hands to the head there on Rodriguez. Colin, both hands, pushes Rodriguez' head down, and Rodriguez backs away. Now Colin tries a shot, and Rodriguez circles away from that. Rodriguez comes in almost a headbutt on Colin. So they go forehead to forehead. Inside of 55 seconds to go in the match. Rodriguez ties up forehead to forehead. His instructions for the coaches don't get pinned, I guess. It's There's a shot by Colin. Rodriguez backs away from him. There's a shot again. Oh, nice d tackle by Colin. And that'll be the takedown. And also, it should be one penalty point, I think, on Rodriguez. I put a one down there, but anyway, it's 8-2. Uh, as uh, Coach Lusenhop asking, I think we had a stall warning on Rodriguez way early in the first period. And that'll make it uh, on the penalty 9-2. to two. Okay. Underway on their feet. There's Colin gave the escape to Rodriguez. And they'll go on their feet. There's Colin, a nice little drag out, comes up behind Rodriguez, has him a bear hug, trips him down, throws him to his back. Rodriguez is out of bounds, but that'll be another takedown for Colin. Four seconds left in the match. Rodriguez goes in a down position. 
quick, does a quick stand up. Collins just throws him out of bounds. They're going to give Rodriguez the escape there. As Collins having a terrible time catching Rodriguez, trying to do anything with him. It's uh, going to be a win for Collins. Let's see, that's 9, 10, 11, 2, 4, I think. That will put the beat diggers in the lead or gain some more points. It'll be 27-18. Well, they're saying, look, they deducted that point from Eaton because they have 17 now, so... They changed that back and haven't awarded the team points to the beat diggers, but it should be 27-17. Uh, there they got it. Okay, now the referee. You got a quick commercial there, Clay? Better electric, better quality, better service, better results. It's better electric and also the home of Sterling Trailers, your big tech's headquarters. Okay, we're set to go. Mackie Sandoval, ranked number seven in the state at 120 against Tanner Lewis. Tanner's ranked number 10. I think that's at different weights. It's been a long time since I read that earlier. As Tanner's uh, ranked at 120, Mackie uh, is... Everything's squirt out of bounds. Somewhere on all those pieces of paper, I've got Mackey. Well, that can wait. we got a match. As uh, one of them's ranked seven, one of them ten. And we're underway. Pretty good little skirmish there, but they come back up ear to ear. Lewis trying to reach for an ankle. Mackey stays tied up tight with him. Now breaks that out, go to forehead to forehead, and Mackey drives Lewis out of bounds. Sure, they've faced each other a time or two. Lewis backs away from Mackey. Mackey looking at the Eaton bench. I'm not quite sure why. He paints a shot. Lewis just kind of works to the edge. Stand there. There's a nice low range single by Mackey. Sandoval picks it up high. Tree tops him down. Reaches out there and pulls, keeps the toes in and gets the takedown. Nice job by Mackey Sandoval. Gets that ankle about uh, as high as he could over his head and comes down to the takedown on uh, Tanner Lewis just by the tips of his toes. So we'll head back to the center. Mackey with a two-point lead. And the referee says that's on him. We'll just restart. Kind of a double clutch on the whistle. I think his hand went before the whistle. Okay, Tanner Lewis set on the bottom. Mackey on the left, working that tight way. So here comes that cheap tilt he likes to use. There's some exposure. Come on, a little count there, referee. A little slow on that. Now he's got a little more exposure. There's one count, one count, one, two. Now we got two counts. And three. That's an awful slow three count. The referee's got, he's running that around. Got the arm bar in there now, reinforced underneath. And he's working Tanner Lewis one way, then the other. That chicken wing a little high, but he's not putting any pressure on the shoulder with it. And we get the two points awarded on the near fall. Like it changes up to, I thought it was a double arm bar for a minute, but uh, just has an arm bar. Oh, he's going to have to bail out. And so he got loose with that, and he'll give up a two-point reversal as we head to the second period. Lost that off arm and got a little out of shape. Gave up a two-point reversal. Sandoval's choice. He's going to defer it, and Lewis is going to take the down position. B. Diggers lead the Eaton Reds by 10, 27-17. Get a caution on the start. Too much football for these guys. They... We had a week or so of practice. Not sure how many practiced all of last week. And they did the duel up a dual tournament at Pine Creek. So they did very well at considering coming off that state championship in football. Okay, Sandoval has Tanner Lewis kind of crunched down there 
in the set out position trying to get out do something now he's working underneath loves that cheap tilt Got kind of an arm bar I think set up on the left side They'll give up on that they come back with a three-quarter Nelson trying to crank it down on Lewis he's got a crank over he's got Lewis down got a one count out of the referee kind of teed out to the side he's got that uh, headlock in there that uh, three-quarter Nelson and uh, Lewis is going to belly out of that hard cross face misses no 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 rest he, that was not good they're going to give a penalty point to Tanner Lewis on a uh, hard cross face now we got a little blood time if uh, while you're away at 152 pounds uh, Zane Fow in a match who was leading, lost by a pin in our first match. Then we went to 160. Alec Peterson took 15 seconds to get a pin over Jace Cassidy. Cookie Barraza with a 15-10 uh, win. What? <laughs> we got a little confused. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> Coach Quinlan getting into it a little bit. His cookie was on the bottom. <laughs> oh, now they put Lewis on the bottom. He does a quick stand up. 109 left, halfway through the match almost. And there's going to be an escape to tie it up by Tanner Lewis. We'll make it 4 4 as we're inside a minute to go, second period. As they go on their feet. Lewis working towards the edge. Hard snap down by Mackey. And Lewis is going to back away from it. That should have been a stall. It's, it's nothing but go to the edge and run out of bounds. Tied up 4-4. A restart. Mackey trying to circle this time. But Lewis, there's a nice double leg shot. In there deep with it is Mackey. Switches off the single. Set him over on his hip for a moment. Lewis in the over position. Trying to grab an ankle. And Mackey trying to pop out the back side. He's, uh, he's about got it set up. Lewis draped up over the top. And trying to stretch Mackey out. Mackey caught underneath. And the fish is going to call a quick stalemate. Thought Mackey was going to kick out of that thing. Okay, we're underway again. Lewis takes two steps backwards. Mackey's circling, takes a quick look at the clock, double leg. And uh, Tanner Lewis sprawling away from it. Mackey with the uh, kind of trip. He's trying to fight off a wizard with one second left. And we'll head to the third period. Tied up 4-4. Four, four. It'll be Mackey's choice. Mackey's saying the ball for the beat diggers. Cardinals signal with the yellow swooshes and brush down the back. And Mackey's set. Lewis in on the left side. And caution on the start. It's going to go against Lewis. And the same call the referees made all night on the beat diggers. This time it went against Eaton Reds. Now <laughs> Mackey wiggle a little bit. So that's going to give him a caution on the start. Okay, we're underway, Lewis. Trying to hang on to Mackey as Mackey stands up. Hits a switch, hard switch, and he's going to get the escape. Didn't catch the knee, but he got loose. So Mackey up by one. There's a double leg shot. And Mackey switches off this single. Sucking that left leg in, trying to get around behind Lewis. There, grab the other ankle. And uh, there's a two-point takedown for Mackey. Sandoval trying to hang out and mule kicking here. Stalling warning on Mackey as uh, Lewis is trying to mule kick out of here and they'll have to go back to the center. The stalling warning is Mackey didn't get him uh, back to the mat and get control. 7 4 lead though for Mackey. 120 left here, third period. And we're going at uh, 120 pounds. Sandoval working from the top. 
He's got a hammerlock pop back there, that left arm back on the hip pocket. Now he reaches up over the head. He's trying to put that reinforced granny, I think they call that, when you reach up over the shoulder and grab that, but he gives up on that move. Still got the hammerlock. Oh, here comes a, a little tilt, kind of a suicide tilt. Tony Lewis uh, faced out against that. 45 seconds of county. Trying to get a cross face in there. He's still got the uh, chicken wing in there on the left side. And here comes that tilt again. And Lewis is exposed again. Because he's given up back points. Here, slow back points. And still thrown for the pin. 20 seconds and counting. Mackey, the, they're both in a set out position. Mackey with that uh, two on one. He's got uh, Tanner Lewis. Underneath, Lewis is going to turn into him, and Mackey uh, kind of got a hip high set up on him. He's got a leg grapevine in there, and Mackey Sandoval is going to win this one, 10 to 4. I could have used that extra point, but uh, we'll keep it here. Ingmar Phillips Insurance, with two locations in Brush and Fort Morgan. Ingmar Phillips can help you with your home, car, health, or life insurance questions or needs. Okay, Conrad Cole up. State champions two years ago. And uh, he's stepping out. Right, number one in the state here at 126 pounds against Eric Russ, number 13 in the state. Conrad in, in the gold singlet. Green trim. Rush across the back and went across in the black singlet that all the Eaton Reds have been wearing. Kind of potluck for the beat diggers on which singlet they're wearing. There's a long range single. Conrad in with it. Has the ankle. Rush trying to fight it off of the waist pry. Now he's got a body scissor out of that. And Conrad will just pop out the backside, pick up the takedown. Conrad. Got a little scissor circle on the uh, right leg. Kind of working that near arm. I'm sure it looked like he's trying to set up maybe a three-quarter Nelson the way he was working. Now he's going to grab a hammer lock, put it back on the right arm, reach over, reinforces it, steps around, trying to walk it around, but he lost the uh, wrist. So he just maintains control. Inside a minute to go first period. Here's a half Nelson and a tight waist. And an oh, man, and Conrad got thrown over the top and tying it up is Eric Russ. Got a little high with that half Nelson, and uh, Eric Russ dropped that shoulder and flopped Conrad underneath him. Conrad standing up, trying to peel the wrist. Conrad giving up a little height here. Uh, Eric Russ is just going to let him lose. 25 seconds and counting here in the first period. Three to two for Conrad. He pops him down and right in on a double leg. As Russ is tripoded up. Conrad tries to lift him up, sets him down. Gets the half Nelson in there. And there, Russ tried that again. Conrad didn't fall for it that time. Now he'll throw a half from the other side as he's got him broke down and over goes Russ. Conrad trying to stretch him out here. Two seconds, one second, and we'll head to the next period. I don't know if we'll get two, just two near fall points. So it'll be with the takedown and the uh, near fall, seven to two for Conrad. It'll be uh, Eric Russ's choice, but Conrad will be in the down position. Granby roll off the whistle and got Russ out in front of him. He's hooked up a, a knee, a leg, kind of a little awkward looking as uh, Russ is out in front of him. Conrad, kind of a Peterson roll. Russ tried to fight it off. And Conrad caught underneath in a single leg position. Russ is got his toes crossed there for a moment. Now Conrad gets that single leg. Trying to Work around as Russ has got kind of a loose headlock on him. There'll be a takedown for Conrad. 
She works out the back side. Or excuse me, reversal. Breaks Russ flat. 110 and counting in the second period. Comes a hammerlock again by uh, Conrad. Got the right arm set in the left hip pocket there. Uh, reaches over the top of the head. Trying to reinforce that again. There's a little bit of length on Conrad. So Conrad gives up on that move. Gets that cross face in there. Traps that far elbow. So he's going to go for that pick and step and over goes Russ, but he rolls through it. And he'll come back up on his base. Conrad a deep tight waist of that left arm. And Russ stretches the wrist out trying to get out of this hold as he's on his knees and we get a stalling warning on Eric Russ for the Eaton Reds. Here comes that half Nelson far wrist and over goes Russ and going for the pin is Conrad. 13 seconds left. The referee counting and there's a criteria chest to chest. Russ bridging hard. Five seconds. Reverse half in there trying to sink it is Conrad but Russ swims out of there and he'll Live for the third period. 12 to 2 for Conrad. And Russ wants neutral. Down by 10. Push away by Conrad. He'll stand in a 10 foot circle. And go forehead to forehead, working the wrists. There's a shot by Conrad. Russ sprawl, sprawls away from it. I think we've gone almost uh, eight periods without a shot from Eaton in the last three matches. As they go forehead to forehead. Another shot by Conrad. And shot to the other leg. Up to the uh, right one, then the left one. Now they come up ear to ear. Russ reaches out and hooks the uh, knee for a moment. So they go ear to ear. Conrad pulls the head down and they'll, they'll back away from each other. Conrad steps back. There was a shot by Conrad. Russ sprawled away from it, kicked away from it more than that. Comes up, catches a front headlock on Conrad, ties up the elbows. Conrad just stands up and walks away from that. 50 seconds and counting in the match. Conrad up 12 to 2. Little throw by attempt by Conrad. Now he comes up, catches a bear hug, and he gets around the waist from behind, and Russ just goes right down to his knees. And that'll be a takedown for the beat diggers. And it brought a bounce. Off a good hard side drag. 31 seconds left in the match. Conrad up 14 to 2. Russ set. Conrad in on the right side. Conrad. Got the deep tight waist in there. Looks that near arm back. Just kind of bunched up in a ball there. Conrad. Oops, that's a cheap tilt. Over goes Russ. There's the near fall point countered. Maybe one. Oop. Conrad about lost him, but he's going to get back on a single leg. There will be two near fall points awarded, and that will be the match. 16 to 2, one away from the tech ball, but that's a major decision. So the beat diggers should go up 34 17. Karen Peterson's up next. High Plains Bank. High Plains Bank offers a wide variety of products that can be customized to fit your individual needs. See what over a century of customer service can do for you at High Plains Bank in Wiggins. Okay, sophomore for the Beat Diggers, Jaron Peterson. His brother is senior. Already got his victory. Okay, we're underway. Jaron takes on Eric from, I guess, P-Y-F-R-O-M. Jaron and the Cardinal singlet with brush and gold across the back. And the, a little head and the sweep 
single leg, not a real serious one. So give each other the evil eye. Little we'll snap down. There's shot by Fromm in there deep with it. Picking up a single leg. Jaron trying to put a little whizzer in there. From uh, around behind him now. Jaron trying to peel the wrist. And Fromm will drop him down to the two-point takedown. Jaron looks like he's giving up a little height. And he'll stand up and walk away and get the escape. Two to one for the Eaton Red. They're giving each other the evil eye again. Journal back away. I'm just standing there looking at him. A little loose tie for a moment. Head tap from Prom. Lots of evil, evil eyes there. They look at each other, not even tying up or wrist slapping hardly. And backs away from a little bit of a move by Prom. There now Prom gets a. Well, kind of a sweep single look as he snaps on the head now. Stay so tied up with the head and just did a little sweep. That's about all it's done here in the last minute 30. Now they work towards the edge. Jaron working towards Fromm and he's going to shoot out on him out of bounds. That should have been a stalling warning on Fromm because he's doing nothing but backing up. We were underway. And we're at the second period. Two to one lead for the Eaton Red. Peterson's choice for the beat takers. He defers it. Fromm wants the down position. Slowly gets his knee pad set. Now he's ready. Four minutes to go. As we're underway in the second period. Quick stand up by Fromm. Peterson out, has the ankle, and busts him out of bounds. Have to restart. Seven seconds gone here, first period. Second period. Peterson down by one. Rom set. Peterson in on the left side. Grab an ankle. Rom trying to stand up. Peterson working at far ankle. Rom right at the edge. Peterson's in bounds. Ties up the legs and uh, tries to drag Fromm back on, but the official's going to stop it and send him back to the center. Peterson stepped on the line. That was enough to send him back. 20 seconds gone here in the second period. Peterson again on the left side. Fromm wiggled a little bit, moved his heels, and that'll cost him a caution on the start. Okay, from little Granby roll, and he's going to come up on top. A little, kind of a Peterson roll look almost. You know? Give him the reversal and a re-reversal by uh, Peterson. Peterson uh, cross face locked up there in an ankle. Drives from over, but from rolls through it. Peterson right back to the cross face. Working, uh, looks like he's trying to set up cross face cradle. Now go for that pick and step. Dumps Fromm over. Can't quite step through that pick and step. He'll come right back to it. From uh, belly and down, fighting that off. Now, Peterson trying to get that uh, cross face cradle look going. Oh, he's got the, still hanging on to the ankle. Can't quite step over it now. From gives a one count up. As Jaron uh, gets back in better riding position, ties up that wrist. Two on one underneath, 40 seconds and counting. Here, here comes the tilt. Fromm went over the top, but Jaron couldn't hold him there for a count. Keeps it. Wrist line, tries it again, over goes Fromm. There's a one count, two. Got that cheap tilt set up on Fromm. Kind of that suicide look. And there's three near fall points. I've seen him count about three and a half times, but he gave him a three-point near fall. And Peterson working that wrist underneath on Fromm. He's like asking the referee, what I do with him? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Peterson looks up, 
exploits to figure out what am I supposed to do with him? He's just bunched up at a ball here. <laughs> okay, Jeremy's going to take the down position as we start the uh, third period. <laughs> we had a little scramble right there at the end, and the referee's now giving a lecture to both wrestlers. I'm not sure what all that's about. <laughs> Can't hear it from up here. As we're top row here in the Eaton gym. Don't forget, this is 1010 KSIR, Brush Fort Morgan. Quick stand up by Peterson. Hits a switch. He doesn't have his uh, wrist out of but his, his shoulder looks in bad shape, but he's hanging on to that knee in the official. I don't know. It looks like he should be calling something, but Peterson somehow that scramble is going to come up on top for the reversal. Puts Peterson up 8-4. to four. Working a cross face now. It looks like he's going for just a regular cradle. Jumps over. Kind of crunch up on that cradle. And over goes Eric, or excuse me. Yeah, Eric Crom. And there's the pin. How about that? To that 440 pin to the for the beat diggers. How about that? Justin Griffith will be up in a moment. Corp Continental is your GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick sales and service provider. Pre-owned super centers ready to serve you in Sterling, Yuma, Julesburg, Brush, and Fort Morgan. Find them at www.corpautogroup.com. Okay, Justin Griffith out here. And let's see, that's 40 to 17 on the team side now for the beat diggers. And uh, referee now wants both coaches out here. I'm not sure, maybe there's a little talking going out or something going on. Tune in to 1010 Preps and More weekday, weekdays from 1 to 2 on 1010 KSIR for the latest in high school sports with John Beltran. Okay, Justin Griffith, freshman for the Beat Diggers, going against Nick Pringle. And we're underway. Griffith's first varsity action this year. A couple of head taps. There we go forehead to forehead. We have ages on the Eaton Reds. Most of the Beat Diggers, I'm guessing that. There's a long range shot by Pringle, but good sprawl by Griffith. Go forehead to forehead. Griffith will break out of that circle towards the middle. And work her way out of bounds. Griffith in the uh, gold single. Brush across the back. And work for inside control. Griffith pushing Pringle towards the edge. Now he'll back out of there and come back to the 10 foot circle. Pringle has to follow him. Work for that inside control, forehead to forehead tie up. Wrist control by Pringle. Griffith trying to turn the wrist and break out of that wrist lock by Pringle. And Pringle breaks a shot, but they're way out of bounds. Look around, I don't see Coach Urano here tonight. Long time coach for Eaton Reds, and they were always great at wrist control here in Eaton. Staying that forehead to forehead tie. Nick Pringle and Justin Griffith. Griffith for the beat diggers. There's a long range shot by Pringle. Griffith catches a front headlock on that. Dumps Pringle down. Can't quite get him turned. Pringle will get back with a double leg, and Griffith with the underhook fights that off, and they go out of bounds. 28 seconds left here in the first period. No score. Forehead to forehead tie. Works for that inside control. And work towards the edge. And Pringles pushes Griffith out of bounds. And you have to restart with 12 seconds. Uh, 12.7. Still no score. Pringle a hard snap down and Griffith drops down and drives him towards the out of bounds. Try to get a double leg shot going there off of that. And runs back to the center and we're underway. 
Still no score. Grandpa for the shot. This is the buzzer rules. No score first period. It'll be Pringle's choice. And he'll defer it. Griffith looks at Coach Lucenhop. And Pringle will take the down, down position. So. Somehow we flip flop our choices, but uh, Griffith will have it for the third period. She works a uh, tight waist in her arm, and Pringle's just going to stand up and get the walk away escape. Double handed snap down by Griffith. Tempt and Pringle now with a nice double leg shot. In there with it pretty deep. Picks up the single now. Griffith trying to get a whizzer in there and fight this off. He gets kind of stacked up there. And he's right at the edge. And Pringle's going to get the takedown. And he'll be right at the edge and out of bounds. Good job by Pringle staying with that takedown. And kind of limp arming out of that uh, whizzer. And Griffith will be down. Down by three. Pringle in on the right side. Side drag on Griffith. Griffith spins away from it. And work those wrists free underneath. Pringle keeping shoulder on him. He's got a little rooster tail there for a moment. Drives Griffith forward. Hits him with a hard cross face. And, uh, Trying to walk that barbed wire around on Griffith. That's a beat digger move. And Griffith's giving up back points now. And there's the fall for the Eaton Reds. Justin Griffith goes down to uh, a pin. Oops. There's about uh, 30 seconds left, I think, in the first, second period. 130 or so. Uh, They'll make the team score 40 to uh, 23. We're waiting for our last match. Baby Arnaldo Altos Garcia Jr. will take on Devin Torres here in our last match at 145. Baby is uh, ranked number nine in the state. And they'll shake hands and we're underway. Be uh, running back quarterback for the Beat Diggers this year in their state championship run. And they work towards the far edge, maybe down his knees. The cat crawls around, faints a shot on Torres. Torres back and away, it'll be out of bounds. Head tap from Baby. Torres will move in. Bang four hits. Both of them go down to their knees. Baby stays on his knees and crawls towards Torres here to the near side. Grabs an ankle, then hooks it up to the knee. Uh, trying to swim out as he's down behind the leg, in between the legs, trying to spin around. He's got Torres underneath him. Torres has an ankle. But baby's got control. And he'll have the takedown. As uh, Torres kind of got him in a pickle, and they're going to give a reversal to Torres. Now, now they give another reversal to uh, Garcia. That was a little weird because we give Baby the takedown and give a reversal. It wasn't a reversal, and another reversal to uh, Baby, and he's now up four to two. Working a hammer lock and a half Nelson. Not a whole lot of leverage on that half Nelson. He's got the hammer lock on the same arm. But I'm put that put the little arm bar in there off of that. Give up on the hammer lock. Maybe he's got a double arm bar. He's trying to walk that around. As he steps out trying to hook the chin, and they're going to say potentially dangerous with 13 and a half seconds left. First period. Coach Quinlan over there working on Coach Lucenhop, trying to show Baby how to finish that move off. Yep. Get a caution on the start. That's going to go against Eaton Red. Nope, that's against Baby. 
Well, no. I think the referee said that was on him again. Raised the uh, red armband. But, you know, oh, nice little switch by Torres. Baby gets caught in a front headlock. We're going to escape to Torres. Devin Torres for the Eaton Reds. And we'll head to the second period. Baby up 4-3. to three. Torres wants a down position. He's down by one. And he adjusts his knee pads, moves in on the right side. And we're underway. A hard a snap down attempt. Baby with a half Nelson at near arm. He's on the, the half Nelson on the far side. I think he's trying to work the far wrist and a half. He's got that set up. With that long distance standing half Nelson that the Wiggins Tigers like to use. But uh, Torres now gets gets down to his base and Baby's trying to sink the half in here on the near side now. He'll step off the other side. Torres hipping into him. He's going work right on the line. Baby trying to adjust that hold. Is he? Working right on the line. We're going to stalling warning on Garcia. I'm not sure what that was all about. Yeah, restart him. Torres on the bottom. Garcia with a one point lead, four to three. And about a minute to go here, second period. Torres on the bottom. Baby with a head lever in there. He's got the tight waist with it. Can't keep that wrist. Control now. He'll re grab it. And now uh, Maltos out to the side. Had the half Nelson going for a moment, trying to bow and arrow cradle, sort of looked like. Gives up on that. Clamps on that right wrist, the near wrist. He has a leg scissors with his arm now. He's not quite sure what to do with what he had. So he'll come up, hit a cross face with the left arm this time, trying to post it with the right arm. Torres uh, trying to fight it off with that little arm roll. And baby trying to work the half from the wrong side. Now he gets it from the right side, but loses the wrist. Trying to drive it over on Torres, but we'll run out of time in the period. As uh, we'll head to the third period. No scoring, and a lot of action in that second period, but no scoring. Baby's choice. He'll take down. Baby is Arnoldo Maltos Garcia Jr. Is a junior. Okay. Gonna get a caution on Torres this time. Not giving enough space between him with his back foot or down foot. He and his side, quick stand up by Baby, peels away and gets the escape. He'll be up by two. Baby with a shot. Excuse me, Torres with a shot. Baby sprawls away, puts a front power half. Oh, and just lost that. For a moment, we'll get the takedown though. There's Baby out to the side. There's, have to work on them half Nelson. Now he's got Torres over for a one count. Now he reverses the half, trying to suck Torres back. He's got to be picking up back points. That hurts from up here. And now he'll just grab a hip and throw Torres to his back. Gets chest to chest. Going for the pin in the last match of the night. And boy, he's flat from up here. And there's the pin for Baby. What about that? We'll give a 449 pin for the beat leaders. That's Wow. So that should make it about 46 to 23. I guess we've got another match here. I think that's on the JV side. Did you catch the name on that, Cody? No. 
Let's see who we got, who we have here. We're saying 170 pounds. So. Jake Sandow. This is uh, Damian Martinez, I think, for the beat diggers. Sandow and Martinez. I could be wrong, but we'll uh, go with that. And we're underway here on the JV match. Sandell with a uh, single leg drives Martinez out of bounds. I could be totally wrong on these names. I'm just guessing. There's a little duck under right behind, and uh, Sandell with a takedown. He's red and gets outside, breaks him down, but Martinez builds a good base. And trying to fight off this. Off his uh, hip there for a second. There's a half Nelson coming. He's trying to limp arm out of that. Send up. Send out out there to the side, and he throws Martinez on his back. And there's the pin for the Eaton Reds. Beat Diggers didn't do very good on the JV side. We'll come back and wrap that up. But the Beat Diggers win the duel. Uh, 46. 23 for the Beat Diggers. A little closer than we thought it would be, but uh, we'll be back in a moment here on 1010 KSIR. Okay, and welcome back. We've got uh, Coach Quinlan up here tonight, so he's going to get the uh, short straw or the long one and get him mic'd up here. It's uh, kind of fun tonight. We've got a big one tomorrow with uh, Mesa Ridge, and they're ranked number 10 in the state on the 4A side. So Yeah, they're, uh, well, I mean, Eaton's always tough, you know, coming in, wrestling a league league team, and Eaton's always got some talent and good coaching. So uh, pretty solid win tonight. Um, kids improved from last weekend. we still got some stuff to work on, but uh, it's getting better, definitely. Yeah, so you can see a little football rustiness there, I think. Yeah, a little bit. You know, some of the bigger guys are still trying to get back into shape. Uh, they're getting there, though. They're getting there. Or, uh, with this many matches, it's kind of hard to get practices in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the kids are just coming back from football, and, uh, you know, we wrestled last Friday and Saturday, and now we got, you know, three days of practice this week and three days of competition in a row. But I think the wrestling is going to get them in shape quicker than practice will, so that's good. I mean, we'll have, you know, one match tonight, one match tomorrow, and five on Saturday. You know, kids are going to break with... You know, 14, 13 matches. Well, that's, so that's, that's pretty that's good. That's pretty busy. You yeah. had a big weekend last weekend. And uh, what were your third in that? Uh, yeah, we big... finished third in our pool and ninth overall, or tenth overall. Tenth. Oh, really? Yep. But the Grand Junction and uh, Pine Creek were a little tough. Yeah, we. Uh, I think that's definitely where some football shape. And, you know, those kids have been practicing for a while. And they're tough. They're solid all the way through their lineups. And, uh we kind of weren't ready for that, you know, competition. But it also shows our kids where they're at. And, you know, practice was a lot tougher, not because of the coaches, but because the kids, they knew how much harder they had to push it this week just to get to, you know, the Pine Creek and Grand Junction level. So yeah. Definitely can make it clear up that level. It'll be fun. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know. Do you get any pressure, Timmy, out in this on the mat thing? <laughs> I don't know. No, How no. much you appreciate all that? All right. We appreciate it. You know, just kind of seeing where kids are at and – you know, have an idea of uh, who's where and what weight they're at, but you don't look into it too much. You know, the rankings, I mean, they're an, kind of an idea of just where who's at what weight, but not a, not really a gauge on, you know, how tough or how good somebody is. Kind of just let you know where somebody's at, so. Okay, I, I had a little confusion on the refereeing tonight. I couldn't, uh, I, I, but then when they uh, changed the score, I, when the, uh, I think that was Coach Camerzel was yelling at the referee. That cost him a team point. Yeah. You know, we had a little bit of confusion with uh, what color, who was what color, and 
I think everybody was confused, the kids, the ref, the coaches, and he, he might have changed it a couple times on us in between the matches. <laughs> but you just got to, you know, you got to wrestle and wrestle as hard as you can and make sure it's not close enough that a referee's decision can play into effect and make sure you keep your cool and, you know, just go out there and compete. And it's early even for the referees, too. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Yeah, it's only the second weekend, so. Well, we started uh, with the JVs, and that was a little rough go for you. Yeah, the JV, those kids are, you know, they're a little bit younger, a little bit more uh, inexperienced. But, uh, you know, if they if they went out there and wrestled like they did in the room, I mean, there, was, there isn't one of those kids that would lose a match. Last weekend they went up to Akron Varsity Tournament and uh, had a couple of them place, and most of them made it, you know, clear to the Constellation Semifinals. So, I mean, they're there. They just, I think they kind of just had an off night. Things were kind of weird from the get-go you know we were 20 minutes late for our bus and all kinds of stuff so we kind of had a rough night there yeah kind of took it on the chin seven to two and gave up a lot of pins yeah that's that's one thing that we definitely have to work on you know last weekend when we lost to grand junction we got pinned you know every single match we lost we got pinned too so we gotta you know beat that into the kids heads that hey you know pin getting pins is not okay you know you can lose if you you know you got to fight hard though you can't you know, you can't give up a pin. That's big time team points, and you know, that's not good for you either, because that means you're not working the whole six minutes. Yeah. Well, we started off at 152. Zane foul, foul, and a match he was leading, then lost uh, to uh, Rusty Lore. But Rusty's he's a hard kid to wrestle. Oh, absolutely. Rusty's a good kid. I mean, it, every kid we've had go up against him from Brush has always been a really tough match. He's a state qualifier. Uh, Zane, you know, he he. He's got to put a full match together, and if he does that, he's going to be awesome. I mean, last weekend he had a couple matches where he wrestled, you know, hard the whole six minutes, and most of the time it doesn't even go that far because he ends up pinning the kids. I think he just kind of had a little, took a little mental break, and Rusty's a kid you can't do that on. He'll catch you for sure. Yeah, he did get kind of caught. I know Zane and Cookie both had a great regional. Oh, yeah, yep. And, you know, they if they wrestle at that level, you know, every single match, they're state placers. But they gotta, you know, they gotta work together, and you know, they drill together and practice every day, and they gotta make sure they're wrestling. Both of them are wrestling a full six minutes. So. Well, then at uh, 160, Alec Peterson took 15 seconds. He's ranked number two in the state, and he's moved up a bunch of weight. Oh yeah, yeah. Alec, Alec put on a lot of muscle over over uh, the summer and the spring. He uh, he got big, and you know, he's still quick and strong as ever, and. He, uh, he's looking pretty good right now. He's yeah. doing a lot of things right. You can see a lot of power out there. Oh, yeah. Like I say, he's, he did, he was packed on muscle. It looks like it doesn't look like he's going to No, <laughs> nothing no not, not much fat there at all. That was all muscle on him. And then Cookie uh, won 15 to 10 in a wild match against yep. uh, Blake Miller. Yeah, Cookie, Cookie can score a lot of points, but he'll give up a lot of points too sometimes. So he just got to make sure. One thing for him, you know, he's going 100 miles an hour the whole time he's just got to learn when to you know throttle it down a little bit and stay under control and he'll win you know a lot more matches than he already does so and toby mcdonald stepped in uh, i don't think he's anywhere near 182 is he? no no toby's about 170s but we wanted to make sure we had a full lineup out there uh he wrestled he filled in for us last week when kyle was playing basketball and he actually uh picked up a pin against Erie last week. I think that might have been his first varsity win. He's had quite a few on JV. But he's getting better every day, too. I mean, he's, you know, he's working his moves, and he's setting them up, and he's, you know, strong as, he's probably one of the strongest kids pound for pound on the team. And once he finally gets his timing right, he knows the moves. He just is, isn't right there with the timing. Once he gets that going together, I mean, he's, he'll be a pretty good varsity wrestler. Yeah, he's fun to watch. And then, uh, of course, Kyle Rosenbrock uh, had a 2.13 pin, but yeah. uh, Garrett Coulson's not a not chump change. No, absolutely not. And that's uh, you know that's why we put Kyle up there. He doesn't get to wrestle with us very often because he's playing basketball. So whenever we get a chance to go against a um, a kid like Garrett, we got to make sure we take the opportunity and get Kyle the tough matches. So when it comes time, he's ready for it. And uh, you know he's. You know, I don't know, 13, he weighed in at 181 today, so he was 14 pounds underweight too. But, you know, he's strong enough and smart enough that uh, he can go out there and battle in those matches too. Well, good. And then Jose uh, taking on Jamie, Jamie 
Murano. I'm not yeah, sure Murano. I sure got James Murano. The way they spell it, J-A-Y-M-Z, is a little weird, but I think that's James. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but uh, he got caught, and uh, I don't think look for that to happen very many times. No, and that's that's another thing. Jose, you know, he's used to wrestling 195s. And that's where he placed at state last year, and he kind of he's still in football shape, and he's working to get back down. But uh, he's he he has to know when he's wrestling two twenties that the kids are a little bit bigger and maybe a little bit stronger than him. So his you know his double legs where he sprawls out underneath aren't going to work. He's got to work the edges and you know create angles and work on his sweeps and singles like that. You know, and he when he takes shots like that, nobody can stop him. You know, as he went on his run last year. But he's just got to remember he's at 220s right now, and those kids are, you know, outweighing him and outstrengthening him. So he's got to stay on the outside and can't get underneath of him and wrestle a complete match too. Right, he's got some great takedowns, of, like getting to shoot the right one. Yeah, exactly. He's got to know which weight he's wrestling at to which takedowns he can take. And Joe Carwin, uh, Lucas Hafferty, uh got a reversal on him, and uh, Lucas, neither one of them are quite 285. No, no, Joe's Joe's probably about 250 sometimes, you know, sometimes 260 depending on what he had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's another one, too, that's kind of slowly getting back into shape. You know, when you're that big, it takes a while to get back into shape, and he's working on it. He's going hard. He, he too, you know, there's, there's not many, I mean, there's nobody in the room that weighs close to that. You know, me and Coach Cox try to go with him once in a while, but he's just too big so it's kind of tough for him to get used to wrestling big guys when there's nobody big for him to wrestle in the room mm -hmm. so as you know he's as he gets more matches he'll get into better shape and really start out working and uh, out hustling these heavyweights that he's you know a lot stronger than yep when we drop down to 106 pound caleb cox he's given up about 14 pounds that's a lot when you're only oh absolutely yeah caleb, yeah 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 caleb you know caleb only weighs about 91 right now uh I know Chad and Mary are trying to put some weight on him, eating as much as he can. But when we have, you know, the tough practices that we do, it all comes right back off. So we're, you know, that's a daily struggle we're fighting with. But even then, I mean, he's a good enough wrestler. He's got a good enough technique. He's got a lot of heart, and he's got a gas tank. So he's going to hang in there in a lot of matches and, you know, push those kids to the edge. And if they make a mistake, he's going to capitalize on it. And, you know, he's, you know, he put a little weight on him and, He'll be right in the thick of things for sure. And he won his match tonight too. So, and Colin Cole, a freshman, he had a scramble there to win eleven to four over uh, Alan Rodriguez. Yeah, Colin's really, really came out hot this year. I mean, he had suffered a loss last week and had an injury to fall out of a match, and after that, he went on a, you know, I think he finished five and two, went on a great run, and he right now he's just doing everything right. You know, he's him and. Caleb are drilling hard in the room, and, you know, Caleb, Colin is, you know, extremely wrestling smart. You know, he's been around his whole life, and he's working a lot of things. And, is, you know, we try to get that major decision, and uh, I think that was a little freshman mistake there, letting the kid go again right at the end. He's got to pay attention to little things like that, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be pretty good this year. And then uh, Mackie Sandoval, he's fun to watch. Uh, uh, he, Tanner Lewis is no slouch, but... Uh, that it got kind of where I said we went about nine periods and we never got a shot from an eating wrestling. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a little rough. Um, yeah, Mackie Mackie's great to watch. I mean, he's slick and he's fast, and you know he'll take you down and put you on your back before you even know what's going on. He's got such nice tilts and top work. Um, yeah, I mean he's he's great to watch, especially against a kid like Tanner. You know, Tanner's Tanner's really solid. He's a pretty defensive wrestler. So it was interesting to see, you know, how that matchup was going to work out. Matchy's extremely offensive style versus Tanner's good defense. And glad Mackie came out on top, you know. And I think his his moves on top, his tilts and stuff like that are really what made the difference for him. Makes me a little nervous once in a while when he does that suicide tilt. Yeah, he, I don't know. I don't, yeah, he, you know, he's really good on top. And sometimes I think he's, he thinks he's a little bit better, you know, than he is. But, I mean, no kid can, you know, do stuff like that. So he's just, we just got to keep on reminding him that, hey, you're solid, stay good on top, and, you know, you're going to win a lot of matches with your tilts. So. Yeah, suicide tilt isn't near as dangerous as a cradle. No, not quite. <laughs> not quite Thank goodness. Bad. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, Conrad, uh, 
Uh, he got reversed right off the bat, but that mm-hmm. kinda, uh, Eric Russ is ranked number 13. Of course, yeah. Conrad, number one. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. I mean, when you're that number one kid, uh, you know, guys are looking to knock you off, and they're looking to do anything they can to score points on you. So when you're a number one kid wrestling a kid like that, he's just going to stay solid, and he's not going to be aggressive and not going to give you an opportunity, not give you many opportunities to score on him. So you just got to make sure that you're, you know, doing what you need to do and taking care of business. And I think Conrad did a pretty good job of that. I mean, the kid wasn't doing a whole lot of, whole lot of movement down there. So that was good for Conrad to keep his composure and uh, keep working to get some points. Then Jaron Peterson at uh, 132. Uh, he's kind of fun to watch too. But he got- Got a little sloppy and got uh, taken down, but uh, then he had to catch Eric Fromm. <laughs> yeah, did. yeah, Jaron. You know, Jaron wrestled 113s last year, so he put on you know 20 pounds too. Um, but Jaron's a great wrestler. He, uh, you know, sometimes he takes little mental breaks. Um, they're getting fewer and fewer. You know, he's still only a sophomore, so stuff like that's going to happen. Where uh, you know you kind of forget to wrestle for a couple seconds and they score some points on you. But he's he's looking really good right now. Um, we just got to make sure he's setting his shots up and keeping his hips under him when he takes them. Yep. And then Justin Griffith at 138. He, uh, his first varsity match. Yep, yep, yep. His first varsity match this weekend. Um, he looked a little tentative at time, but yeah, uh, see, he is. He's got some skills. Yeah, he you know he's another he's a freshman too. Um, he's he's a good kid. He's you know been wrestling a long time. And with the group that he's got in practice, I mean, he's working with Jaron and Baby and Zane and Alec and Conrad and Mackie. You know, he's definitely working with the, some of the best kids in the state. So uh, here pretty soon, you know, when he starts putting it together and starts, you know, putting a beating on the kids, um, he'll pick it up. And he just, he, he too needs to, you know, make sure he's not taking breaks. And he'll be all right. Yep, and then Baby finished it off with a pin at 4.49, but uh, it was a scramble for a while with Devin Torres. Torres has got a few tools. Oh, yeah, absolutely, and, you know, so does Baby, but he kind of he gets into that thing, too, and kind of lets those guys wrestle their match. Um, I, don't say, I, don't, I don't want to say he takes breaks, but he kind of lets them move, and kind of he tries to react instead of kind of making the action sometimes. But he, you know, he usually finishes up on top, so. We need to get Ray Merrick. Cool. Top of the hour. Thanks for sticking with us, uh, wrestling. And we got to uh, just want to talk about Baby a little bit and set you up. And we'll be back tomorrow at 6.30. So looks like the bus is about ready to leave. I better let yeah. you go, Coach Quinlan. Yep. Thanks for stopping by. Yep, no problem. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I know a lot of fans appreciate it. And got a lot of people, you know, Colorado and Brush and across the country listening. So Yeah, and you set up that uh, streaming thing yeah I, I really enjoyed it this weekend yeah high school cube go on there set you up an account and you can listen to rob and watch the watch the video at the same time so oh does it it tied together somehow no but oh, okay you can listen on the radio yeah, and then listen on the radio together. and see what rob's talking about so yeah, if they were standing here we could probably do that yeah yeah <laughs> but i really enjoyed it this weekend that was awesome i wish they could have got a little more but mm-hmm. i guess there's some bandwidth problems with yeah it's it's weekend. kind of funky you know every gym we go to we got to try to set up the wi-fi as soon as we get there so it's a little different every time Okay. Well, thanks, Coach Quinlan. Good job. Beat Diggers win 46-23 over the Eaton Reds. And we'll better get headed home. It's 9 o'clock already. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was going faster for a while. Yeah. Thanks a lot, folks. As uh, just said, the Beat Diggers win 46-23. We'll be back tomorrow night at 630 on 1010 KSIR. Thanks for tuning in.